The global conquest that the Garlean Empire had begun was very close to conquering all three of the great continents. Ilsebard was of course the first to fall, followed by Othard shortly after. They even got their first steps onto the continent of Aldenard. But, as we all know, the united Eorzean alliance was enough to stall and even begin to push them back. Yet the residents of Eorzea weren't the first to try and deny Garlean rule. Many countries fought valiantly to maintain their independence. Some of them even staged rebellions after being conquered. Within this lesson, we will discuss one such country. Gather round, my friends, for today we will discuss the diverse kingdom of Dalmasca and its capital city of Rebanaster. Now, many Eorzeans have heard of Dalmasca, but a surprising amount of them know very little about what this country was like before the Garlean occupation. The Dalmascan desert lies due south of the Skate Range, which are the large mountains separating Dalmasca from the Burn. In truth, Dalmasca is a monarchy, a very successful monarchy at that. The Hure bloodline of Banagan has ruled over Dalmasca for nigh on a thousand years. But what kind of kingdom was Dalmasca before Garlean occupation? Much like the city-state of Alamigo, Dalmasca is considered a gateway kingdom. Traveling to the heart of Othard from Ilsebard isn't easy, even at the best of times. Large mountains, dangerous ocean currents, and of course, the burn would deter anyone and everyone from choosing a path that wasn't the Dalmascan Desert. As such, caravans would cross the desert very frequently, meaning that Dalmasca always had traffic and trade from every country that would move goods between Othard and Ilsebard. Under the guidance of the Banagan royal family, Dalmasca would prosper from this boon in trade. But eventually, Dalmasca would be faced with the same issue that Alamigo had faced, as moving goods via faster and safer sailing routes would move a lot of trade to the ocean instead of land. However, the leaders of Dalmasca did not panic. They simply secured their shipping lanes across the southern coast, meaning that a large chunk of sea trade still had to come through their territory. Thus, their civilization would continue to flourish as a gateway kingdom. But Dalmasca was known for much more than being a metaphorical bridge between the continents of Ilsebard and Othard. As a people, Dalmasca is a melting pot of culture. The last census I could find placed here only within 40% of their total population. Another 20% was made up of a reptilian-like race called the Banga. An additional 10% were of the Sikh, with only a minor 5% belonging to the Viera. The remaining 25% were a mix of Heidelin's other races, from Aura to Hrothgar. So, as you can see, Dalmasca was a kingdom that was rich with culture from many different races and even more tribes. Many people attribute this to the fact that Dalmasca was a prosperous gateway kingdom, meaning that many caravans that came through simply chose to settle down and make Dalmasca their new home. However, when you have this many different races, cultures, and beliefs, tension is bound to build as these different groups begin to butt heads. As such, Dalmasca had a very simple philosophy of live and let live. Dalmasca would never force you to change how you think, but so long as you were within their borders, you wouldn't be allowed to cause trouble over differing views. For example, if you're the kind of person that desires to shout your beliefs and opinions regardless of where and when you are, you would be carried away by Dalmascan law enforcement for disturbing the peace. This policy took time for many groups and clans to get used to, as many cultures can't help but push their opinions onto others. However, over time, the people of Dalmasca learned the value of keeping their thoughts to themselves. To the Dalmascans, there's a time and a place for voicing your personal thoughts. Out in public is not that place. Yet this doesn't mean that the thoughts and feelings of the people would go unanswered. This brings us to Dalmasca's method of governance. 
As stated earlier, Delmasca is a kingdom, with a king or queen of the Banagan royal family acting as head of the country most of the time. Their family's coat of arms is known as the Suncrest, but it's more commonly known as their kingdom's flag. The Banagan royal family have led their people for centuries through both good times and bad. But their devotion to Dalmasca has led many people to revere them. The ruling council beneath the king and or queen is known as the Blue Council. These individuals are officials that take care of the day-to-day -day problems that the royal family doesn't have time for, such as public relations, general legislation, law enforcement, and more. But here's a fun fact. The Blue Council got its name from the fact that the offices they work in were made with gorgeous blue tiles. Below the Blue Council, things start to break apart into dozens of different minor positions dedicated to helping Dalmasca run as smoothly as possible. So, if someone or a group of people have an opinion or desire they wish to be addressed, it would be presented to one of these minor groups of governance. If it's deemed important, it would be brought to the attention of the Blue Council. And if the Blue Council cannot make a decision, the final say will always be left to the king and queen. This system has kept Almasca at relative peace for many years, so it's little wonder that the royal family is so well liked. But the royal family and Blue Council aren't the only groups to make note of. Dalmasca's official realm of worship is a polytheistic religion called the Light of Kiltia. This church worships a primary deity known as the God of Light. And once upon a time, their religion had a lot more power in Dalmasca. However, as we covered earlier, Dalmasca has a policy against forcing any singular view upon all of its people. So, when the leaders of this church attempted to take greater control of the government, the royal family interceded, declaring that there will ever be a separation of church and state. But religious fanatics weren't the only people Damascus leadership had to defend themselves from. Multiple invasions of their borders would occur over the course of history. As a gateway kingdom, its location was considered too good for some groups to not want to take for themselves. However, Damascus was ever resolute and pushed said invaders back time and time again. These would-be conquerors always desired to seize Dalmasca's capital city, Rabanaster. Rabanaster is the center of Dalmasca's power. All of the country's wealth and trade eventually flows through it and then back out into the world. As the home of the royal family and seat of commerce, Rabanaster has ever been known as the Desert Sapphire a shiny jewel of culture and prosperity within a vast wasteland. But, as we all know, Rabanaster wasn't able to defend itself forever. The Garlean Empire, with their advanced Magitek, had already begun their conquest of Ilsebard, and were moving southeast to take control of Othard as well. And of course, to get to the heart of Othard, they needed to go through Dalmasca. The Garleans knew that the capital city of Rabanaster was extremely well defended on both its western and eastern flanks. However, their northern flank was very weak, since Rabanaster never expected an invasion to come from the mountains. They never expected an invasion to come from the burn. Led by the 4th Imperial Legion, Garlemald would fly from the north and bring the full weight of their Magitek upon Rabanaster. This was the only time in Dalmasca's history where they suffered an overwhelming defeat, as Garlemald would launch multiple airships from the north to capture the city. The king at the time, Romanus Banagan Dalmasca, refused to pledge fealty to Garlemald. So the Imperial Legion decided to conquer the kingdom by force. The crowned prince, Rassler Banagan Dalmasca, died at the fortress of Nalbana as he attempted to repel the Garleans. Not only that, his twin sister, Ashelia Banagan Damasca, was reported as killed as well. Losing both his beloved children and so many of his loyal soldiers took away what remaining will the king had. Ramanas would surrender to Garlemald. The Suncrest, Damasca's flag, was banned. Not only that, but their religion, the Light of Kiltia, was also forbidden. 
And then, shortly after, King Romanus mysteriously died after the occupation began. Some say that he died of a broken heart, but many more say it was a political assassination by Garlean soldiers. This event was about 30 years ago, and Dalmasca would become yet another garlean controlled territory. But the people of Dalmasca were proud, and civil unrest would ever be present within the kingdom. Over the course of the Garlean occupation, Dalmascan citizens would become more and more restless. And in response, Garlemald began to tighten its grip on them more and more. Eventually, the 4th Imperial Legion, led by Noah von Gebranth, requested aid from the 14th Legion, led by Gaius von Belsar. This call for aid would be answered, and many Garlean commanders would become infamous as they dealt with the would-be rebels. For example, a younger Livia Sas Junius would become known for her butchery, as she would publicly execute those she suspected of insurgency. After the continent of Othard was secured, the 14th Legion left and began its campaign against Eorzea, starting with Alamigo. Many years would pass, and closer to current times, the people of Dalmasca heard of Doma and Alamigo rebelling against Garlean occupation. This would spark a fire in them, as they saw this as their chance to try and fight back once again. But their resistance didn't go as well as the others. The capital city of Rabanaster would be fired upon with indiscriminate force by the 4th Imperial Legion, and countless Dalmascans would die. Even innocent people who weren't trying to fight back were bombed. This was the event that crippled Dalmasca and left its capital city of Rabanaster as the hollow shell it's currently seen as. When people speak as to why Garleans deserve no pity or peace, this is one of the events they point at. Such a horrific and violent display of power was seen as madness at best and outright genocidal at worst. But surprisingly, the Garlean bombardment had unknowingly revealed some of Rebanaster's deepest secrets. Things like the massive Garam Sith waterway and Lazalia Garden ruins were now exposed. But, in time, the brutality against Dalmasca would be avenged. The 4th Imperial Legion would suffer a devastating blow by the resistance of Bozia, and their legion couldn't call for aid from Garlemald's capital, as that had been thrown into civil unrest at this time. Eventually, the 4th Legion would fall to ruin, and their leader, Noah von Gebranth, became a topic of conspiracy. Leaders of the Bozian resistance will tell you that he was killed and burned alive by one of his former soldiers, a man named Leon Q. Helsos. And yet, there are still others that say Noah escaped his own death and wanders the world as a man forgotten by time. This has made many Dalmascans speak of the ghost of Gabranth in hushed whispers. Despite how battered and broken Dalmasca is, things aren't entirely without hope, as there was a secret up Dalmasca's sleeve that even their own people were unaware of. There was an unknown organization that worked from the shadows to protect the Banagan royal family and Rabanaster. These unknown peacekeepers were called the Sarab, and a Viera known as Fran is one of its members. It turns out that Fran, alongside other members of the Sarab, had staged the demise of Ashelia Banagan Dalmasca, faking her death. This idea was actually approved by her brother, the late Prince Rassler, who believed that Garlean rule would mean the death of the royal family. His hunch was correct, as his father mysteriously died after the occupation began. Fran used an ancient Viera technique to place her into a deep slumber, practically freezing her in time. However, 30 years later, if the rumors are to be believed, Lady Ash has awoken once again, and plans on leading her people as they rebuild their lives from the Garlean barbarism. Only time will tell if Rabanaster will again become the gem it was known as. But, if history is to be believed, the Banagan royal family will see to it that Dalmasca is made to prosper once more. 
And that, my friends, is the modern culture and history of Delmasca. Because of what they suffered at the hands of Garlemald, it's unclear if the current generations will ever truly forgive them. And not many people would blame them if they didn't. But despite all of that, I personally have faith that Lady Osh will see to it that her kingdom is made to rise from its own ruin, and shine brightly in the desert once more. So, if you ever find yourself traveling to Dalmasca, remember my words. Listen instead of speaking, and you will earn their respect. And as always, stay safe, my friends. Thank you all for watching to the end. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe and share this with your fellow adventurers? With your help, I'll try to reach out even further and bring even greater stories to you. Although, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge my biggest contributors. A grand thank you to Amina Viltaria, Travon Shea, Potato, Sage Mouse, Sinalv Bagel, and Sizani with an additional nod to the scholarships on screen. Links to things like my Twitter and that of my channel artist Caddy can be found in the description. Thank you all for your viewership, as well as your support. And I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Class dismissed.